um, I do watch a lot of people talking about different stuff, and um, one person was saying how uh, with gaming, it's gotten to the point where, like, it's gotten to the point where ownership of gaming, um, uh, what was it? How was it he said it? It was basically the gaming is all about, uh, it's all about people, um, joining online and what happens at end of game. That's what it was. End of game, you know, when the game's over type thing. And I, I was thinking about that, and I'm like, okay, who cares? At the end of life from a game, and you gotta look at this, you gotta look at this from the standpoint of a developer. There's a cost incurred for developers to keep the games going. Our favorite games, sadly guys, can't go on forever. And albeit, I love Fantasy Star. I absolutely do. But Fantasy Star had to end at some point. It, it absolutely had to end at some point. There is no ands, ifs, or buts about it. Um, Sega was, was only making... Oh, you sneaky little mother hubbard. Okay, so... <clears throat> Sega was making you know, so much money on it, and basically Sega did at some point have to shut the servers down. I mean, people stopped playing, they moved on, uh, people were going to like, say, World of Warcraft or what, whatever else. Whatever else. So Sega did have to shut the servers down, because uh, they were no longer making money on the game. And that's what it is. You go into this business because you're intending to make money on stuff. Uh, you don't actually go into the game business just because you like to make games, or at least corporations like Sega and stuff do that because they have stockholders, shares like that, um, people that they have to appease when it comes to game development and stuff like that. They can't just they can't just say, oh, crap. They can't just say, okay, we're done here. Um, it's all good, you know. So the new thing with gaming, though. And this is something that this is something I talk to people about, and still don't seem to understand. The new thing with gaming is is that gaming is no longer uh, the old days where you owned a game are, are almost over. You know, so when it comes to games, it's like it's like you don't own it anymore. Now it is you are licensed for a game, and what that really means is is that means. Um, that means that, like, when you take, you download a game, you, you pay for that download, uh, you don't actually own it. So, you download it from the PlayStation Network, uh, you don't own the game, Microsoft owns it, you are just licensing it from Microsoft. Um, it's also like, uh, let's see here, um, World of Warcraft people, you know, you just have a license to play World of Warcraft. Uh, so long as you have so long as you maintain it, and Blizzard, of course, maintains the servers. Uh, that's your license. You're blue. Okay. Uh, that's your license, and that's that's just the way it works. In this day and age, that's kind of become the norm. No! No! Not freaking again! <sighs> but that's just sort of the norm nowadays, because that is... That's just the way it works. That's just the nature of the beast. You you no longer own your games. Now your games are owned by whoever the company is that whoever the company is um, that created the game. Oh, you guys aren't giving me anything good. So whoever it is that created the game, that's who determines, you know, your licensing to it, yada yada, etc. etc. But now the thing is, is that there are some games out there that are like like Fantasy Star. Fantasy Star was actually was actually a good game. And Fantasy Star kind of put its foot in both sides of the equation because you owned Fantasy Star. You owned Fantasy Star, and at the same point in time, Fantasy Star was software as a service. Because there was the online service where you go, you'd be online, you'd play with the community. I had lots of fun playing towards the future. I had power level characters that I wanted to play doing that. And it was it was great. That's basically how Sega had one foot in each 
each area. But then you look at stuff again, World of Warcraft, um, actually let's go back. Let's actually look at, uh, oh, what was it called? Um, Black Ops. Black Ops, Call of Duty, stuff like that. There's a mass amount of stuff that you can do online. And if, if you're paying, you know, if you're paying your, you don't have monthly fees, but basically uh, every time a new map comes out, they make you shell out another $15, uh, $20 for the map pack. And people eat that stuff up. People just eat that up. And to a degree, I'll, I'll say sheeple because, you know, they just they just keep playing the games, keep playing the games. You know, in, in my view, in my view, it's kind of a waste. But you know, they keep playing it, and yeah, I can't, I can, I cannot say I would spend, you know, was a hundred, two hundred bucks. Someone once said, uh, if, if you get all the map packs, I can't say that I would spend that. If you really love a game that much, you know, that's. The developers got you hooked. That's that's revenue for them. Generated revenue. Great. Um, oh, great. One of those guys. And nobody here takes damage from that. I couldn't even see what that did. Uh, so, you know, it's generated revenue for the company. And yeah, they're, they're happy to take it from you. But at the same point in time... At the same point in time, you got to look at it in the sense of, you know, okay, so you're paying how much? You you basically by the time you've bought all the maps and everything DLC for Black Ops, you've paid for the game uh, four or five times over. So if that's what makes you happy, fine. But once once they pull all that offline, you no longer have access. You no longer have rights. Um, you're no longer able to play your Black Ops. I mean, that's that's pretty much, it's gone. You can only play the offline modes, and yeah, at least you have something to show for it, but for me, I I don't know. For me, that's not enough, at least for Black Ops, but eh. Then again, look at me, I'm playing Fantasy Star online, offline, and this is, this is the experience I'm getting. Nobody's here to play with me. <laughs> so, whatever. But any rate, though, you know, it, it's it really is a decision that the players are going to have to make. And going back to like say the um, going back to like say the uh, the uh, what what's the games here? Uh, Mortal Kombat and Justice God Among Us. Uh, these are actually these are actually ones that shine pretty well because what what WB Games did with these and WB's made a lot of screwy screwy choices with their games. I, I won't deny that. But what they've done that I actually thought was really good is is when they're going to sunset a game, not necessarily not necessarily kill the servers, but when they're going to sunset a title and they're going to basically um, stop producing new content for it, things like that, uh, they essentially give players the option of purchasing a... Um, you, you can purchase a uh, an ultimate edition of whatever the game is so they did the uh, ultimate edition of Injustice Gods Among Us they did the um, the Mortal Kombat complete edition with a K great love that love that because I'm getting all the DLC and I just have to buy the one game that was cool that was cool I have a Mortal Kombat complete edition on my PC I do play that a lot I don't do as many streams with that one uh, but I do enjoy my Mortal Kombat I do enjoy Mortal Kombat. So, okay, here's where I got ganked last time. So the thing that I, I would generally put forward here, and this is, you know, this is something I'd like to hear from you guys back on, is what do you think about it? I mean, are you the type who thinks, you know, hey, I'm okay with, I'm okay with losing my games, or do you really want something solid? Because for me, again. I like to have something to show at it. End of life. You can't take away my copy of Legend of Zelda. I have it for my NES. You cannot take it away from me. You can't take my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, my Mario. You can't take any of that stuff away. It's sitting on my shelf, and you know what? It's mine. It is all mine. 
So I, I absolutely love that. That that to me is a very strong argument uh, against doing the download thing, against doing the uh, pay-as-you-go stuff. You know, whatever model it is you want to call it. But then again, how many people actually go back and play their old games? How often do you play your old games? You know, there, there's something to be said about some of this. So, what is the shelf life of a game? I, I guess, I guess that's. I'm kind of rambling here, but you know, but realistically, the question is, what is the shelf life of a game? You know, should should games last forever? Or should games be something where it's just, you know, we we play them for a little bit and then we're done with them? You know, we oh snap, I'm getting ganked again. Is it one of those things where we just really you're gonna do this crap on me? Um, <clears throat> what should the shelf life of a game actually be? So, hey, I, I, I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear from you. You know, what should the shelf life of a game actually be? Um, yeah. So, if you're watching on YouTube, leave comments below, yada yada. You know, watching here on Twitch Live, just comment in the streams. Ooh, snap. Somebody... Oh! Dang it! Not again!